You want to know me, I'll tell you. Oh, how do you working, man, in show business? Dad in the army. I said, stop. My mama left. Mama! Mr. Daddy, mate. He stopped the show. No one else helped me. No one else. James Brown! I had to do a lot of soul searching before I took it on because I knew it was such a big deal. And, um, and I knew it was going to be challenging. And, um... To me, I like the challenge, and um, and I felt like with the people that were involved with um, with Mick Jagger, with Tate Taylor, with Brian Grazer, um, with AJ, um, <laughs> with Robert, the guy who who did the the wigs, um, that we had a good chance of doing something special. Chad is an amazing actor, and he's he's has a wonderful personality, and I thought that I, uh, you know, knew him because I had met him, you know, prior to us filming together. And then when I got to set, it was very different. And I realized how much he was really sort of immersing um, into the character and, and becoming Mr. Brown. And that was really, really intoxicating to watch because of how dedicated he is. He's very, very dedicated. He's amazing. He's, uh, you know, he looks like him, he's, he's do and the moves are just mind blowing. And when I first got it, I was like, dude, when are you doing a split? He's like, oh, you never saw the split? <laughs> so he kept saying, and then I didn't, I didn't know what to expect, and then I saw him like do the splits and do everything else. And then if you watch him against James, I'm sure there's gonna be a bunch of versions of them two together, but, uh, is is pretty uh, pretty amazing. It was it was intense. It was an intense, tense, um, you know, project to do. Going from I can only do the mashed potatoes in the slick shoes to like to the point where you could do it in tennis shoes because your legs got so strong. Um, you know, you could do it in anything, but it was a lot. Definitely a lot. I've been here this long, and I'm still here. See, that's the name about the funk. Funk don't quit. Man, that's not my check. So if the funk up and quit, then that's it. That's why the funk don't quit. Are we done, Mr. Bird? I'm afraid not, Mr. Brown. I say, are we done? I think we still got more funk in the trunk. I think James would be very happy with the way he's being uh, portrayed by uh, Chad and, uh, and the filmmakers here. Uh, obviously, uh, everyone here on this set and, and everyone that ever knew or saw James just had an automatic affection for him because he was uh, uh, so appealing as an entertainer and, uh, and as a human being. He was uh, uh, concerned with uh, the social welfare of, uh, of his peers and his people and uh, his, uh, his kin. He was someone who was great, but a trailblazer. He was iconic in that way. He was the first in that way. There was something about him that found something that had never been done before. And I think that whenever someone is the first, they, be, they lay the foundation in which everybody wants to build on. And I do see it in artists today. Well, there will only ever be one James Brown, but what you see, the showmanship and how he presented uh, himself in concert and we see it now with all the people who have the backup dancers and it's like this full-on you know uh, experience but there will only ever be one James Brown Mashed potato. That ain't nobody's mashed potato.